And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Sal Adatsi, who during his near-death experience encountered an elder entity, and today we're going to learn about it. Sal, thank you for joining me and welcome. Hi, Jeff. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, Sal, if you don't mind, can we start on the day that it happened and go from there? Well, the day that it happened was, um, I felt it coming, to be honest. I felt uh, a weirdness in me in the two weeks preceding the event. And so when it happened, was I was outside in a garage. I was putting some bicycles, motorcycles inside the garage when, when I felt complete pale, cold, strong pain in my heart. And I just fell, just fell on the floor with my nose first. And I saw it coming, but I couldn't do anything because your body doesn't really react to the command anymore. And it was a beginning of a fight there, trying to get up and falling again and trying to get up and falling again. The pain, you know, we always try to minimize and thinking I'm just have some heartburn or some something that I ate or too much coffee or something. And but then I realized that it wasn't because I just couldn't move. I was flat on the floor. Uh, I couldn't, I felt, I felt like I had a hell, an elephant sitting on my chest or it was really weird because as I felt the heart stopping to pump and your body starts going cold, no blood going anywhere. And at that stage, I think I was not even blinking. I, I was just there fighting, gasping for air and in extreme pain. And then there was a, slight moment that I realized, oh, this is serious. This is no joke. This is something serious. And I can't breathe. So and I couldn't move and I couldn't breathe. So I've accepted that I was dying. I said, well, maybe this is dying because my body is not responding. I'm in extreme pain and I cannot breathe. So there was a lot of sadness in me in that moment. I, I, I remember dropping four tears big thick tears out of my eyes because I didn't want to die. I was really, that was a shock. I was like, damn it, I'm dying. And, but on that moment, I, I realized that I could separate my consciousness, myself, the voice that I am. I could separate it from the physical body and there was no more pain. So I managed to get out and to see the body still on the floor. And I was in bliss. Immediately I was in bliss. I was in paradise. I couldn't feel it was, it was the best feeling of my life. And everything was a bit still hazy. It's like physical form lost its density. It was more energetic than, than dense stuff. And then I went through that. I'm sure you've heard it a lot. If you do this profession, I'm sure you heard it a lot. I went through an extreme darkness with a bright light at the end. And I just started going through that a tremendous speed. And when I got to the other side, I got faced with that beautiful, strong source of this energy and this feeling and information and light. And, 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 but I felt comfortable, but I was very, I didn't feel scared. I didn't feel fear. I, I felt quite relieved, actually. It was a, huh, there's the next room. <laughs> there's the next. <laughs> I just left the planet over there, and now here we are somewhere else. So there was, there was a lot of joy in that. There was a bliss. I guess the blissful feeling come, also comes from that. Uh, not only the mind is not, uh, an obstruction because as soon as you have a question, the answer came immediately. So there's no stress, there's no pain, everything. It, it's, it's a pure bliss state. And 
and that's when I started receiving information from that entity. So did the entity just appear from you out of nowhere like magic? At the end of that tunnel, there, I get out of the tunnel, there was that entity, and then I could see, you could see different fields of energy of different densities, and then I could see what I call now other souls or other spirits, they were floating around, there was people going one direction, another direction, but I had that one with full attention to me, just focused on me. And, and in seconds, the communication starts. And again, I'm going to feel very comfortable speaking this with you because it's what you do. Mm -hmm. So information just, you see it coming and going. You see the information going in, in like energy fields and energy currents. So you have a question, the answer comes. You have nothing. The, the question is never separated from the answer. So everything that exists, exists as question and answer together. And so the exchange of information, because it's all telepathically, and there's, there, there's these blocks of information, but the blocks of information, they're not heavy. They're full of information, but at the same time, you understand information clearly because instead of dealing with your physical body, you are now back where you belong, which is an endless, spacious field of information and knowledge and questions and desires and everything is so easy because it's immediate it's and and that's when i started helping having the the movement of my life because i my, my main question at the time was what am i doing here what is this and that entity goes straight to putting in front of us the 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 movie of this existence since i was born this time everything that i've been through the, the what they call the movie of your life or life review the life review which is so precise and so um you can feel every second of it i could feel it when i was three years old and that episode happened and then i could feel it when i was 15 and then i could feel it when i was 25 in on my case was all the moments that made it made a difference on the process for me to be there and and we go through that process where i had no guilt i had no everything makes sense that the notion of good and bad disappears because everything is good everything has a reason to be everything has a function everything has at a purpose. So everything exists and we just navigate through it. And our experience has to do with our choices. And so that entity showed me why I was where I was. And I was like, great. And immediately another question comes and you get the answer. And then I put another question, another answer. And this dialogue just happens and happens and happens. And I felt I was there for two hours because I had questions. What about my father? What about my mom? What about my family? What about that person that hurt me? What about this? What happened there? Why did I do this? Why did I do that? Uh, and everything got explained. Everything got <laughs> explained and sorted. And again, no remorse, no pain. And I was feeling great. I was like, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> this, this is amazing. This is beautiful. And, and I had questions at the time. I had questions of um, a relation to me. How could I be happy? How could I put myself, how could I do the most of me? Because obviously I knew at the time when that happened, it was a psychosomatic thing because I was very, 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 very depressed. The two weeks before, two weeks before, I was so depressed. I was so upset that I hang up a phone call. I threw the phone away and I said to myself with all my, with everything that I had in me, I said, I said, well, I'd rather die 
to be alive like this, I'd rather to live the world like this, I'd rather die. It was a state of depression that I was at the time. I was in a miserable state of depression. And two weeks later, when I have that episode, and I'm in fact dying on the floor, fighting for my life. And I remember taking it back, saying, no, 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 no. So not only I have understood how powerful our thoughts are connected to our emotions, not only I got that in first hand, that like a whip, a whiplash of saying, be careful what you think, because you'll get it. I got that like in first hand. Uh, and then I, I remember going through, okay, what if I prefer this life? And you get everything explained. Uh, and, and also, what if I choose this life? What if I chose this life? Or, and I saw, I saw the mechanisms of construction, of existence, of at this stage, there was a, a multitude of worlds because I moved away from the planet Earth as a world. So I moved away from it and I could see it this size minimum. And I could see other options that you can go and we can choose and we can go try everything. And, and I realized that I missed, that I do love a lot of people on the planet. And that made me more emotional and missing it, not only for the fun that we have on the planet, those moments are priceless, but also because I do like a lot of people on this planet. So I, I, I had a moment where I understood that what was going on was a choice, a choice of staying on the other side or a choice of coming back. And, and I realized at the time that that was my choice. I was like, no, 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 no. I want to be there. I want to come back. I want I love the planet. I love my life. I love the earth. I was not that it was bad on the other side because it was not, it was beautiful. But I realized that there was a lot in me still for to, to, to come to this side. And, and that didn't stop there uh, because then it's, I felt like I was in a correction. Yeah, it was clarifying me on things that I don't need to worry. It was clarifying on things that don't matter. Things that we waste time here on the planet and they're pointless, they were a waste of time. And, and basically the biggest focus was on how much I am loved. And I know this, this is for every human on the planet. We don't know how much love there is for us, how much, and, and love here, being the creative force, the creative force that, that allows life to happen here. We are endless sources of that love. And it's only our mind that, that blocks it or, or stops it from, from us experiencing it. So my process had to do a lot with that, with, with the self-worth and the self-belief, plus the understanding that I could choose my life to my likings and I owe no explanation to anyone. You can do whatever you want. All these rules, all this, comp this is all bullshit. It's all, doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. The, the clarity of that message of, if we're not here doing something, that makes us happy or, or, or feeling the fullness of who we are, then it's pointless. We shouldn't do anything else that doesn't bring you joy or doesn't, doesn't make you vibrate with the essence of who you are. That's when you know who you are and why you're here and that no one else, is, there's no problems. No one is a problem. Nothing is a problem because, because there is a way. There, there is a way. It's, I don't know if this is making sense, but for me it was 
was one of the most revealing um, moments. So did this entity offer you a chance to come back? Well, well, we carried on with the conversation and then I, I was loving it. I was loving, I, I was, cause first you get, you get access to an immense amount of knowledge and existences beyond what we are used to. So I was in awe. I was still like, wow, this is huge and endless and so big and, and, and you can choose anything. I was in awe. I was so relieved and so happy. It was a blissful state of receiving so much information that for me, for my progress was essential. And there was no question or answer. It's an understandment. It, because he communicates in telepathy, he didn't have to ask me anything and I didn't have to ask him anything. It was obvious, besides all the benefits of this encounter, it was obvious that I was happy to come back. It was obvious that they were having for me to come back. There's a, it's energetic. There's, a, there's something that happens that we don't need to ask or to. It just happens because it's the best option. Are you saying that at the time that you ask a question, simultaneously the answer comes to you? Yes. Yes. When you ask a question, the, the answer is coming already. It's, it's weird. It's like when you open the door, if you open that door, you're only going to have the light that comes from that side of the door. If you open that door, you're going to get a different light that comes from that door. So it's like the question is the, is the opening the door. So the question and the answer are together. It's one could not exist without the other. And, and they're everywhere. They're like bubbles. That was another beautiful sight to understand that every question and answer, which is a subject, and then that could evolve to a, a mental conflict or a disapproval or approval. Or, so that will generate a charge, an electric charge. But understanding that they are all there, it's us to choose in which one we want to grow or we want to go experience. It depends where we are in our process and not where the planet is on its process. It's, it, the planet is just a consequence of our, our uh, vibrational identity or our vibrational standpoint or our intentions. So yeah, it was obvious at that time that I still wanted to come and they were happy for me to come. I had a bit of a homework. I see it as a homework. Um, it was a, a bunch of do's and don'ts. And when I was feeling comfortable on the other side, that's when it, uh, then I felt very, very comfortable. I, I was just eating all of that information. And then there's this moment where we look at each other and I feel it from his side saying, okay, now it's time to go. Boom. And off I go. Very slowly, I move away from him and back to planet Earth, back, back to my body. And I got up, I don't know how, I got up, I crawled. And then I got up and fell again and I got up and crawled. And, uh, the doctor said that this episode where I was on the floor that left a scar in my heart, they say I was there for 35 minutes. For me, it felt like two hours, but they say it was because they can measure the scar that the heart have, that was caused by 30 to 35 minutes. Hmm. And 
yeah, then I managed to get home and ask for an ambulance. And people called an ambulance. Yeah, and then on an ambulance, my heart stopped again because I kept telling the doctor, said, listen, I'm in extreme pain. You have to give me some medicine. And they, I had a past when I was a teenager. This was years before this. At this time, I was already a clean and sober person in the program, in the Narcotics Anonymous program. But years before that, my teenagers, I had been to drug dependency issues. Uh, funnily enough, there was mostly psychedelics and there was my search for the universe and life and where we come from. So I bring my experience today makes little sense because I, since I was a kid, that's what I was searching. I was searching the stars. I was searching the perfect life. I was searching how this grows so well, how, how, how many other of these planets are. How, I, I've always grew up with this, with this attraction and these questions. So my experiences on the other side had to do with the subjects that are most interested to me. And because I've also learned that we are all free to choose to think about whatever you want. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong because everything has a function and everything has a need. Uh, as we spoke, because light and dark are together. There's no day without the night. So it's okay to like the night or it's okay to question the night and it's okay to question the day. So that notion of good and bad also disappears. Uh, but that's why when I hear a lot of stories of people that see their ancestors or they see the devil or they go, that is only because that's how they occupy their mind the most. Seeing by my own eyes how a thought from the moment you choose to choose it, okay, what if I choose this? And you see how thoughts in a large scale, we're talking about a universal scale, how they become things. And how are you entitled to enjoy it because it's your creation? And that's fine. That's fine. It's fine for anyone to experience whatever they want to experience. But learning the power of thought and then coming back to the planet seeing what's going on on the planet and dealing with people making the most horrific affirmations, mostly because they don't know the power of their thoughts. And I think that's the biggest, I launched my first book and I'm now writing on my second book because my second book is more directed for this message to be well cleared in a way that people understand this last week, it's been the expression of the 3D printer. People now can see how a 3D printer works, right? Somebody put some numbers in some computers or some drawings, and there's a tap that builds stuff, builds a house, builds a car, builds a whatever it is. That's how our thoughts work. That's how this planet comes around. That's how this universe comes around. That's how you and me came around. This is all thought generated for a certain amount of time with a certain amount of intention. And having that clarity was the most important thing for my case. Because then when I was back on my shoes, well, then they saved me. They had to shock me again because I had another stop at the ambulance because I had a past of drug abuse. So they thought I was having an overdose because I was clean and sober for four years. And I kept telling the doctors and my family in the ambulance, I didn't do any drugs. <laughs> I'm freaking dying here. Just give me some freaking, now it's the time to give me the painkillers because now this is serious. And they didn't want to give it to me. And I remember the pain coming back because I was back in my body and my body's in not in good shape. And, and the pain was again so strong. That I told them, forget about it. If you're not going to give me painkillers, pain I'll rather go up. It feels much better there. 
there's no pain and I don't have to deal with you guys <laughs> arguing with me when I'm telling you I need something. <laughs> so she said, listen, I don't have time for this. I'm out again. And that's when I went out again, met with the entity again. And it was again, mostly on my questions on, on our powers as creative beings or how far have we came and how does this work? And since then, it's been my biggest area of, of research and meditation and you get when we understand when you're on the other side speaking with that entity and we understand that while we are here all it matters is joy it's all it matters when you're in your state of joy when you allow this creative force of the universe that it's you because you are part of it same as i am same as a dolphin, we are all part of this loving, loving creature, loving energy, loving current. When we allow it, when we allow ourselves to be in a joyous place, they feed, the rest of the universe feeds. Galaxies, billions away from here, they feed, they feel it, because this is all electromagnetic. So when when you play with your battery and you generate when you open your valve to the most that's this is universal this you're being a part of a chain of an universal chain and it's 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 just beautiful. And then you understand, you add to the, to the fact that you don't die, which is also another one that I keep forgetting, but it's quite important to tell people, you don't really die. And I'm sure you heard this before. There is no death. There's no such thing as death. There's no such thing as death. So there's nothing to worry. And then when they give you, it's like almost an order to be happy to be joy, they, they, they managed to explain, that entity managed to explain, to give you the right to love, the right to be happy. You are entitled the right to live in bliss here. This is to leave heaven on earth. You have to live in your bliss. You have to find your bliss and you have to let it flow. It's like opening a tap. It's like we're a tap of water and our, our minds keeps closing this tap of joy. But if we open, it, this life can be unmeasurably wonderful. It's, it's, it's incredible. This is a perfect plan. Everything works perfectly. There's no dangers of draft. There's no uh, dangers of burning. There's no dangers of plastic. This is all mind. And that's a problem because the collective mind is very creative. And the difficulties that they experience and they start proportioning it to others. That's where the responsibility that each one has to understand how powerful their thoughts are because they're making their own bed. If I take you back to the beginning, when you were fighting for your life, did you just finally come to a point where you decided, okay, I surrender to death? Exactly. I understood I was dying because I felt like for the last time that I fell and I had my face in the sand, the wind changed consistency and sound. I could see the wind passing by. I could see the ants. I could feel the sand. I could feel everything merging into energy, like a cushion of energy. It's like a merge. And as I couldn't breathe for I don't know how long, uh, it was an acceptance. It was okay. This must be dying. I guess I'm dying then. Um, and was that the moment when I said, well, I guess I'm dying then. Just be it. 
those drops, those teardrops dropped because I didn't want to leave the planet. Not like that. It's, it comes to your mind, people that you still want to apologize or people that you want to give a hug or people that you would really like to go out for dinner. There's a bunch of information that comes immediately. And, and I got sad and was like, well, so this is it, be it, you know? Mm-hmm. And in that moment that you find out that, oh no, it's not me, it's just the body. The body's not good. I'm great. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm ready. Let's go. You talked about how the mind is an obstruction and being free of it on the other side. Can you expand on that? Yeah, well, it's a known sentence, right? I, I don't remember if it was Einstein or whoever it was. It says the mind can be your best friend or can be your best enemy, right? Uh, yeah. The circumstances. Circumstances we find in life. They're mostly mind-made. They're mostly mind-made. So can you repeat the question of which part it was? Because Well, what I wanted to see is if you could give us some more insight how the mind works and how it's an obstruction to who you really are. Well, from the moment from the moment you, you from the moment you have to be very, very, very careful. Uh, I started writing down i started thinking because i saw how powerful immediately a thought it's gone to start building it so don't build barriers don't say i'm going to get traffic this is going to be hard this is going to be difficult each time we make these assumptions just because society today shows us that it's like that this is an order we are actually creating that barrier. We are actually creating the traffic. We are actually creating the, the, the lack or the abundance. That's why there are no cliches anymore. Think positive, speak, speak positive, write positive. Take the time to actually see your life how you want it to be because you will have it. But if you always or most of the time focusing on the problems, you're just calling them there to be there again tomorrow. And I know this is hard for for many, 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 many people to accept. And I think it's going to be generational. I, I think this new wave, this will be a basic understanding for the way of living. But so far it's been a transition. Every sentence like that that you say to yourself you are creating so the effort the homework that we have to do is before it's you have to ignore circumstances and you have to make your own consequences you have to believe first of all believe that you deserve a good life you don't have to suffer here we don't have to suffer church and i was raised catholic church raises that this is Uh, to pay and this is to suffer and this is to be hard because then we go to heaven no it's not like that we chose we live in heaven and we choose to come here occasionally this is like the cinema once you're on the other side once i got joined i left the planet and i i joined with who i am the feeling that i have to describe is that you me and every human on this planet just imagine a gigantic octopus and the octopus puts just the tip of a finger inside one glass of water and puts another tentacle in another glass of water. And you can only read the temperature of that water, get the kind of animals are on that water. But once you finger inside the water, it doesn't remember it belongs to an octopus. It's just there leaving the water. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, I'm in the water. It's like us on the planet. Once we're here, we're focused on what I like, what I don't like, how does it taste, how does it smell? Uh, because that's why we chose to come here. Do you think the head of the octopus wants to experience a good life or wants to experience everything, including bad things? Well, there's no good without bad. 
that's why I was saying there's the, the concept of good and bad disappears because good and bad is just perspective. There's, there is no good or bad. They're necessary events to cause a bigger good. It's like what they say to break the egg to make an omelet. Uh, sometimes there's going to be situations considered horrible, but the amount of light they're going to bring, it's totally worth it. It's just the only way. The only way to bring that light is if we go through this darkness, because light and darkness is going to be together. So it's just like part of it. It's an understanding and it's the part of it. You mentioned that you learned some do and don'ts. Is this yeah. trying to stay focused on positivity part of the do's and don'ts? And if so, is there anything else that you learned? Of course. Uh, well, any event that didn't bring you joy in the past, you don't need to, to, to speak about it anymore, ever. It's not your fault. It's not no one's fault. It's something that happened. So don't even think about it again. Anything. Basically, you can. Just think about what you want to experience. From the moment you wake up, design your day how you would like to experience it, and your month, and your week, and your year. Your powerful thoughts will open those doors where all those probabilities are most almost assured to happen. And that's answering to how the mind can be an obstacle. Because if you put your mind on the newspaper, on the news, on the politics, you are just feeding that whole energy ball that's going to stick and it's going to drain you. So your mind is not being your friend. Your mind is creating new obstacles for your blissful life on the planet. There's no obligation whatsoever for you to pay attention to, to the news or to the politics or to whoever publicity comes to us. We are totally free from today, from now, to choose something that brings you joy. Because when you feel joy, it's not the octopus doesn't want to feel pain. The octopus knows that pain is part of the, of the joy. The beautiful thing is when we are in joy, when we are actually doing that thing that really satisfies you, when you're doing in that point that you followed your intuition, you didn't hear to anyone, you did what makes you happy, that stuff brightens the whole. That stuff feeds the whole. That stuff makes the universe expand. That's the stuff why uh, the universe is still expanding. It's our consciousness evolving. And when you're in a joyous vibration, your electrical charge is much powerful. So all the network is expanding even more and to more people and to badly compared with the war going on. You cannot fight. That's a, there was another old saying, I think it was Mother Teresa, wasn't it? You cannot fight war with war. You can only fight war by if the peace is bigger. So it's not by dropping bombs, it's not by fighting them, it's just by creating a new area where, where it's obvious that this is a paradise on them. This is the paradise. I don't know if it's making sense because it's, it's a lot of information. So after this event happened, how did your life change? Did it take time to process this or did you immediately implement changes? Oh, I'll immediately implement the changes, but it took me one year of a lot of meditation, a lot of peace and quiet, a lot of uh, filtering all the information that I received, a lot of the believing that I deserve to be happy, uh, that I don't need approval from my parents, that I don't need approval from society, that I don't need approval from my friends, that I am who I am and only me can do what me does the same way that you are. And uh, there's no repeat of any of us here. We're all different perspectives and we can all contribute. So the first detachment was the most freeing and no guilt, no guilt in, in, in anything, in, in 
oh, I would like to go to China, but my family will be offended. Mm. No, doesn't matter if your family is offended. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if your ex doesn't like it. Doesn't matter if your kids will be upset. Doesn't matter. If you're acting on it, if you if you center yourself to that identity that it's you, if you and if you know when you feel it, it's the only way that you're doing what you're su supposed to do here. When we sacrifice for others, we're not doing what we're supposed to do here. We're not. I'm not saying we, we shouldn't help people. We help when they're receptive. It's, it's amazing. It's a no worries. When you were on the other side and you saw the Earth and other planets, so what you were seeing is other worlds that we could go to and, and have a life there? Yeah, yeah. It's where your thought takes you. It's all by thought. It's all by thought. It's where your thoughts take you. What about this? You're there. Oh, what about that? Oh, you're there. It's thoughts into physics. It's thoughts into physics. Who do you think the entity was? Well, obviously, so a couple of things that happened when this happens, right? A little bit of background. When I was young, on my teens and then 14s, uh, each time someone uh, of the family would die, I would see them a few times in the next few weeks. I would see them like the traditional ghost, like it is a, a ghost that passes through crowds and comes to you and speaks to you, laughing, loving, gives me information and then would disappear. And I would tell information to those closer to them. It was well received by some and not really well received by others. But I, I, as I grew up, I was a bit into those areas. That's why I didn't get affiliated to any uh, Christian book per se, because they're all derived from the same. And so I was connected to that side of life when I was young. And then when I had this experience, there was this constant channel that stayed open. I've had many episodes of channeling voicely. It's like if I would let that entity just take over and we start speaking and saying things, our life should be lived. And it was very good channeling experiences that at the time I didn't know what I was doing. I, well, I understood. I understood what was happening because I met the person who was communicating through me, but I didn't know it was a known practice all over the world. It, it, that for me was new. Um, I got sidetracked again because I don't remember what you asked. Maybe I answered already. I was wanting to know who is the oh, entity. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I call it as at the time, at the time. First, I thought it was God, the way everything was explained and so powerful. What do we call God? Me being European, being raised Catholic, schools, choir boy, singing, all that sort of stuff. And then, and then I only left when I was in my teens because, you know, because different choices. So what I felt was the description that we give of God. Um, what I've studied after. When we're on the other side, the other side will find, again, channels or means of rapport, of communication to pass a message in a way that you understand. So I would understand the message that way that I did. It was not Jesus. I know Jesus well, and I know the Jesus vibration. In the meantime, since then, I've been doing a lot of channeling courses. I've been doing practicing channeling. I wanted to know who the entity was. Uh, other channelers and teachers, uh, some say it's your higher self, it's your 
guardian angels, it's your superior self, it doesn't really mean, it doesn't really matter. It is me, it is a part of myself, a part of myself is a higher self, and that higher self communicates with another higher entity than him that communicates with another higher entity and then, however, all of us have access to, you can call it God or source or the energy that creates worlds, call it whatever you want. This current, this love current that goes through plants and rivers and planets and galaxies, that is what I call God. That's what I know it is because it's the loving creating energy that makes everything possible from thoughts with consciousness and intention and how things come over. So I tried to find out their name a few times. There was a few names that were coming in and I don't know if he's my gateway to God or to source, but these days I, I decide what type of channeling information I want to receive. If I want to receive a channel information from God, from source, I remove a few barriers. If I want to know things about myself and I want to just channel and listening from my inner being or higher self or our soul or over soul, there's so many names for the same thing. And these days, it doesn't matter what name I want to call it. I know it's there. I know it's pure. I know it gives me information from source. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the name anymore. And then I did courses with aliens to channel aliens. I've channeled very well. Um, now the name ran away. I've channeled with Pleiadians. I've channeled. Arcturians, I've channeled. Oh, lately I've been working with the people that they say it's where I come from. They say I come from Sirius B. Uh, I don't know how far down that channels are you as well, but that's where I come from, Sirius B, uh, which I started communicating in the last few weeks. And everything complements itself. It doesn't matter if the information comes from source or if you want to call it Jesus or whoever opens the door for you, the information is the same. Which I'm also curious with the amount of people that you interview because I hear stories of people that have near death experiences and then they come horrified. And they've been through hells and they've been through. None of mine. I think that they're there because of the state of their being at the time of their death maybe they're you know going yeah. through some problems or whatever and or they're on drugs or or something and that's how they wind up there but somehow while they're there their energy changes and they're able to get out yeah exactly whatever opens their door for them some people is a horse or, or a fountain or a water stream whatever brings them to their essence do you have any mental abilities after your experience that you didn't have prior? Well, the clarity to read intentions without people speaking, it's many, 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 many times that you just like, you don't need words. So that one was uh, very enhanced, uh, cap capturing everything where people are and what they want. And, and that was the main reason then to start helping them because then you see where people drop that ability that they have to be connected to who they are and they change to the mind made worries of today. And that's where you want to tell them, no, no, please stop, stop, stop. No, no, forget all that. You're just making it bigger. What do you want? You want difference? think about the difference almost like you have to lie to yourself lie to yourself because it's the, the physical world responds to thoughts not the other way around 
believe in the power of your thoughts because you are creating either you want it or not. A lot of people out there are grieving because they've lost either a family member or a friend or a loved one. What kind of advice do you give those people? Yeah. Oh, actually, since this, I've lost my dearest grandmother that I lived with and she, we still laugh. I can hear her laughing now. And one thing is for sure. Once whoever departs to the other side, it's much better. So if you love them, you should be happy where they are. I know it's hard because society tells you the other way. But if somebody passes on, even worse, if it's someone that has been suffering with, with whatever years of diseases and stuff, even better, the, the, the sooner it goes, the better. Because they're not dead. Nobody died. They just changed room. Yeah, you're going to miss them. That makes you sad. Yes, it's a fact. But it also depends on you if you want to stay in that place where it's sad or if you want to change to the place where life is gorgeous and the other person is in a beautiful place. Because basically that's what it is. It's our choice again. We go back to our mind and why is our minds that creates the problems. You have the choice. You have no obligation to be anywhere else that it's not good for you because if it's not good for, going to good for you it's not going to be good for anyone else and yes it's sad but i'm sure you can feel them i'm sure you can feel the anyone that departed that it's clearest the closest to you dearest to you you can find them i remember another teacher putting this in a way that i never forgot was the best way to describe um, because I used to feel people after they were dead. I've been used to that since I'm a kid. I saw ghosts. My aunts used to come to me after they, she died and to messages to my cousins and my mom. Uh, so I've never been worried with that part personally. These days, it's a party. It's a relief. It's a, as soon as the person passes to the other side, it's a relief. Everything makes sense. There's no more problems anymore. So give yourself a break. Give yourself a break. Don't. You should be happy. I know it, it doesn't have to be hard. They moved on. They're not dead. They're not dead. Nobody's died. They're, they're somewhere else. I saw choices where to go next. That, and, and also, when the person passes to the other side, you will be busy. Even if you miss the planet Earth and there's people calling you to come for an apparition or a visit or a channeling and all that, that is possible. But you will be so excited with the amount of new stuff that is on the other side when you realize, hey, I'm not dead. I'm not worried with that anymore. This is awesome. Where can I go? You are suddenly busy in another area and life is good anyway. It's this is never supposed to be bad, except when our minds make it so. So I hope it helps. I don't know if that helps or not, but they should be happy. If you love them and you want them happy, trust me, they are very happy. They are, they are very happy. Being you, on the other side is a relief. You mentioned earlier that you have a book already. I didn't even know you had a book. What is the yes. title and, and where can we find it? The book now it's on Amazon and it's called Captain Heart. My, my ex-girlfriend convinced me to change the name. The name was supposed to be Zenith, but women still have a powerful a power over me. So <laughs> she changed it <laughs> to you ladies that know how to change things. <laughs> Uh, so the name of the book is called Captain Heart, but I sign as George, George Adazzi. I don't try to sign as Sal, I sign as George, because I don't want to offend anyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that, it was my first book. <laughs> yes, that, tell me. That book is about your NDE? Yes, but it brings a bit of background, uh, explains a little bit. Um, you have the short version. 
but yes, I've always been involved with, as I told you, since I'm a kid, I've always been looking at space where I lived, used to see the stars and many phenomena. I've seen many phenomena at sea. I travel at sea. I spend my time at sea where the, the, the sky is beautiful. There's no pollution. I see a lot of phenomena all the time. There's so many lights in and out. There's so much stuff going on. And it's for us to enjoy it. This is to enjoy. This is to enjoy. If we're not having fun, you're not helping God or whoever you want to call. Mm. It's like a room. If the room is dark, what's the point to have the light bulb that it's not screwed in to give lights right? So you need all these lights screwed in. While you've been out to sea and like you spoke of, without any light pollution, have you ever seen UFOs? Oh, 100%. All the time. And then you ask them, okay, if this is a UFO, do this. And they do it. Mm. And you're like, and I was not alone. And we were like, holy shit, <laughs> let's do it again. And they do a different set of colors. And then <laughs> go on. Like, ah! <laughs> Things like this happen so much. But uh, what I found is that we have to be in that state of, being where it's not this is mine and this is ours it's this is us this is this is ours yes from us and from them the planet is as theirs that it is ours so it's this this mind conceptions that we have of borders of attacks of differences of wars one thing i've learned with my three NDs. If you believe in those things, you will see, you will see them happen to you because you are free to choose whatever you want. The Russian war doesn't exist just because of the Russians. It exists because there's two peoples there that they love to fight with each other. Their nature, it's what they do. They'll keep fighting until the message passes through and they don't want to fight anymore. And they are free to do that. Everyone is free to do whatever they want to do but you're helpful when you're happy to the whole system. It's only when you are in your... Sal, after watching this podcast, people may want to reach out to you and ask you questions. Are you open to that? Sure. With pleasure. With what's pleasure. The, what's the best way to reach you? Through my email. I believe you have it. Not, I'll text it to you. It's Salvador. Can I write it here? Yeah, or you can just tell us because... Um, you know, some of these podcasts are on just audio platforms only, so those people can just hear it. It's Salvador, as the country, Salvador, A, T for tango, at gmail.com. It's very easy. Salvador, A, T, at gmail.com. Okay. You said you're working on another book. Have you started yes. it yet? Yes. All right, maybe we can get you back here once you finish it. We can talk about it. I would love to. I would love to because um, I think that book has been worked on a way for the message to be simple and clear. Just the positive, you know, even try to squeeze and see, okay, what is the part that would be good to read? Well, before we finish up, can yes. you give us one last positive message? Oof. Uh, now I'm dealing with the situation that I've been applying this one to me of the don't look back because, uh, because we don't have to. All it matters is what do you feel now? The feeling of the feeling I've been putting to myself is, okay, if everything is possible, because it is, everything is possible, then what do I want? And then I follow, what do I want? Because it's the only way to keep me happy. And if I'm happy, everyone around me benefits of it. And then I sleep well. So uh, detachment, ignore opinion. Don't even think one second about what everyone can think of whatever you decide to do tomorrow. 
you can change now, you can change anytime. Uh, I don't know how can that sound positive, but this is to have fun. This is to have fun and it's your choice. You can choose to, to beat up on yourself or you can choose to have fun and it's okay to choose to have fun. It's okay. It's what we're here for. This is supposed to be fun. It's not so, supposed to be difficult. So thank you for that message and thank you again for joining me today. I really thank you. I, I appreciate you and I wish you the best. Me too. And thank you for calling me. Thank you for reaching out. I, I really hope it helped. Mm -hmm. I hope it makes any sense. <laughs> it will. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Pleasure. We'll see you again. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.